So it's been like a minute slang for a while. Anyhow, I didn't fall off the planet. I'm still here. So welcome to the Renaissance Builder. So yes, it has been a while. Uh, I've just been really busy, honestly, trying to come up with some things. And, and uh, I'll be honest with you, the uh, video, the, the game, playing game thing bug has kind of got me the last day or so. But anyhow, I want to throw together some videos for you guys, for your viewing pleasure. Don't have a whole lot of ranged out. I've been waiting for the time to actually plan some of these videos or some of this content. I have quite a few things I want to do. A few uh, disassemblies as well as I'm putting together the parts to start building the uh, high-end computer for the channel. Uh, there's some things I was hoping to accomplish before doing so. They're not going to happen in time. So I said, you know what, screw it. We just got to get a move on with this stuff. So we're throwing things together the best we can. That sounds kind of negative. It really isn't negative. It's just, you know, life happens and we do the best we can with that. It's really all it amounts to. Anyhow, the biggest thing I wanted to point out with you guys today, I had the misfortune of using what I thought would end up being some pretty decent equipment the other day, and it turned out to be just rotten crap. So I want to get into that. And that is this here wonderful cobalt pipe wrench. So this is the aluminum pipe wrench. Now I say wonderful crap. This is my rigid pipe wrench. They're both 18 inch pipe wrenches. This one happens to be cast iron, whereas the other one's aluminum, you know, whatever. That actually should not make a difference, honestly. So the difference comes in the teeth and the geometry of how they set up the jaws as to what a pipe wrench really is worth. There are some finesse features about them that do kind of make a difference, but for the most part, if a pipe wrench has good jaws with the geometry set up correctly to really bite in, then it's usable. Long time ago, I had the misfortune of using a just straight off Chinese knockoff pipe wrench. It was a three foot pipe wrench. No, I'm sorry. I'm exaggerating. It was 24 inches, so two foot pipe wrench. Either way, putting together two inch uh, threaded pipe, right? Two inch black iron. And that thing would slip its ever living nuts off. I mean, it was crap. It was total garbage. Like you'd get in on it and it would just totally slide right around the pipe. Just garbage. Whereas you take a rigid, this thing will wrap itself around a two inch pipe and it's only an 18 inch pipe wrench. And if I need it to be even tighter, I'll put an extra cheater bar on this thing and crank it till the end of time and never have a problem. Like, it's a challenge to break a rigid. It really is. That being said, I'm sure, I'm sure it's doable. That would be kind of interesting to actually try because they also have a lifetime warranty on them. It's like, it's like Snap-on, lifetime warranty, but you'll never need it. Well on their wrenches anyhow. Their power tools are crap, but wrenches I'll go with. However, this thing, working on inch and a half, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't even that, it was inch and a quarter pipe. It kept slipping on me, like it wouldn't, it wouldn't even grab the fitting. Again, black iron pipe, uh, the teeth clean, clean teeth so it didn't have a bunch of dirt in there now mind you my rigid has a bunch of dirt in the teeth and it doesn't even care so clean teeth right and it just kept slipping all over the place really honestly not that big of a review that you can do with these things I mean there's really two points to it one the teeth are garbage like yes I think you could get this thing to work I did manage to get the job done with it but it was not a pleasurable experience like having to constantly reset after slipping around a pipe 
is just ridiculous. As well as a stupid, this is going to sound ignorant, all my, uh, all my pipe fitter buddies out there are going to be like, you know, this is going to, soft hands, are, I don't care what you want to say. If I'm doing a review, I'm doing a review, right? You grab a rigid pipe wrench. There's, they don't put effort into making sure their handles are ergonomical. They don't. But at the same time, they don't put effort into bastardizing an already acceptable design. You wrap your hands around a rigid and you can put the balls to it. You ain't slipping on that sucker. Cobalt. Oh, we want an industrial design. So they put an I-beam looking contraption on there. I'm sorry, but you get to wrap it around on this thing and those corners will eat it. Those corners are not comfortable. It's not a comfortable pipe wrench. Again, anybody that's using a pipe wrench for what it's actually worth is going to be like, who cares? But it's a thing, so I'm mentioning it. So yeah, cobalt pipe wrenches. Garbage. I will never buy one again. I'm going to be honest with you. I haven't tried all the pipe wrenches out there, but the two, there's two pipe wrenches that I have had absolutely nothing but good experience with. One is the rigid. Sorry, but you just can't beat it. Yes, they're more expensive. The aluminum ones, when they go and make an aluminum pipe wrench, guess what? It's the same bloody mold. So the handles and everything, the geometry is all exactly the same. It just happens to be made of aluminum. And by the way, I have bent one with a 10 foot cheater bar and it didn't break. It just bent. So again, try breaking them. I dare you. And that was an aluminum one. Anyhow, rigid, nothing but good luck with rigid. Like I can confidently buy anybody. I can tell you hands down. You want a wrench, a pipe wrench that's going to work. You buy a rigid, period. The other pipe wrench I've actually had a lot of good luck with is Linux. Linux, quite a few years ago, started coming out with tools to broaden their line of, it's actually kind of funny because Newell Rubbermaid, yeah, Rubbermaid bought Linux and then told Linux like, hey, you got to come out with a bunch of new products. So they did and they came out with tubing cutters and pipe wrenches that were actually really good. Uh, the, the pipe wrench was, was great. Um, I lost it, go figure, but it was a good pipe wrench. So yeah, I'd say if you're going to, if, if you, if say anybody's going to come to me and say, what pipe wrench should I buy? I'm going to look you straight in the eye and go rigid or Linux. Otherwise toss it. The rest of them are garbage. So that's that one for today. Anyhow, that's for that's it for the review today. If that's all you tied into the video for, do me a favor, hit a thumbs up, hit a like in there. It really, really helps out with the whole YouTube algorithm. Uh, but please do me a favor, hit a thumbs up in that video and uh, make sure you're subscribed. I've got a bunch of these things going around, sharing my honest opinion about the everyday tools that I use. So that's it for if you tie if you watch this video just for the pipe wrench review, that's it. So you can go ahead and log out and no hard feelings. However, if you are interested in some of the stuff I got going on, I want to show you some of the stuff I got going on. For starters, we're getting some uh, computer components for the computer build, like water fittings for liquid cooling loops and uh, tubing and stuff. Now we're not going all out hard tubing, fancy stuff right from the get go, but we are doing liquid cooling. I need to figure out, we're gonna do a bit of experimenting with the cooling system before I go putting this in like a, you know, legitimate build and going all out with hard tubing. Now here's the other thing I want that I'm interested in. Thermal, <sighs> thermal Grizzly Cryo knot. This is thermal paste. When you put a heat sink on top of a CPU, you have to use thermal paste to make sure the heat can travel from one component to another as best as possible. That's what thermal paste is for. Now, what I found out watching a few videos, uh, 
in fact, Der Bauer, who apparently is part owner of Cryo of Thermal Grizzly or something. I don't know. There's something going on there. He pointed out most of your thermal pastes are oil based, which means they basically take an oil as a substrate and then mix in a bunch of stuff so that it conducts heat. Now, here's where I'm interested in this. This stuff supposedly is silicon based. So it's not an oil substance, it's a silicon substance. Now, the reason I care about that is the oil filled computer. Oil filled computers are known for washing out the thermal paste and components. So whenever you take a oil filled computer apart and you want to use those components in a normal, like a normal case, you have to go through and redo all of the thermal paste because the oil disintegrates it. I want to see what difference a silicon based thermal paste makes in an oil filled computer. I want to see if it does actually make a difference. So we're going to experiment with that. That's just the tubing. Here is something else I am super excited to work on and uh, to play with. This is called the Raspberry Pi Top show you the box here you know it's nothing too fancy but here's why i'm excited about it i have been waiting a long time for this normally these things go for like three hundred dollars um it see it's a lot of money for what you get it is and it isn't it's worth it but it's still a lot of money for what you get because what you're getting is a chunk of plastic that holds a keyboard, a touchpad, and a screen. And I'll show you. And you're gonna be like, why in the world would you do that? Well, a very specific reason. So this is the Pi Top. It's not like hugely fancy. Uh, the plastic is actually slightly childish. I say slightly, like it could be worse, you know, it could be that soft touch crap, but whatever. I mean, it's plastic. And again, you get a touchpad, a keyboard, and a screen. Keyboard doesn't have the numbers, it's small. Here's the difference. Slide the keyboard down, and voila. I can put a Raspberry Pi, if I get a Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, it pokes right in here. I want to use the Raspberry Pi 4. I'll have to modify this to do that, but I want to use the 4 because the 4 is more powerful. Go figure. Um, so we'll see, we'll see how that goes. There's an interface board in here that might make that somewhat difficult. But the whole point of that is the Raspberry Pi. Now, I've played with Arduinos. I've actually d played a good bit with Arduinos, and they are fun, especially for hardware-based projects. For example, the, the fanciest thing I've ever done with an Arduino is a tank, an autonomous tank, that it drives itself around and, you know, it has a camera that looks at things, uses a pixie cam to identify objects, and it can actually drive around on its own. Like if you take a ball or different colored things, it'll, it'll follow it. Um, that's the fanciest I've ever done with that. But Arduino is very limited. It is very limited in that you're using basically, I think you can use others. You can use other program software, but you're limited for the most part, C-sharp programming, so you very core software level programming and like very little interface. There's not a whole lot of interface. Yes, I have the, um, what do they call it? The to one touch chip, the, the chip that allows me to control it with my cell phone. So that's fun. I can use it as literally a remote control tank. Um, so that's fun and all, but interface is really limited. A Raspberry Pi has the capability, in fact, it has a built-in RJ45 connector. It has the capability to be a web host, which means it can actually host a very basic level web server 
that can take data from something else and put it online that you can access from anywhere on the planet, given the right IP address. So that's pretty snazzy. In fact, there's people that take the Raspberry Pis and make like a big bank of Raspberry Pis to, you know, run stuff. And on top of that, the Raspberry Pi only costs 35 bucks, but that's not where the cool part is. <laughs> Uh, the fun part is, what do they call it? RetroPie. So you can put software on there to run all your game emulators, like the Nintendo 64 games, the the Super Nintendo games, Mario Kart, you know, Super Mario World, Zelda, all those games. You can run on a Raspberry Pi. So there's that. And I've been wanting to challenge my wife to a game of uh, Mario Kart for a long time. Anyhow, so I can put that, and so I can run the games off of here, off of the Pi Top, so I can put that in here uh, as a housing. I can also then program Arduinos. I can, can literally set this up to program Arduinos and act as an interface to different Arduino projects. Like, they feed the information into this, and then I can literally use this as the interface for the Arduino. As well as some very basic level uh, IP software handling. So any computer that's hosting a software level interface uh, using an IP address that requires an IP address for a back door, I can use the Raspberry Pi to tie into. Because again, the, the interface, the software is held on that computer. So I don't need to run that. I just need to get the image and put it on a screen. Raspberry Pi is perfectly capable of doing. So that should prove interesting. So I can literally set it up as a very low-level Linux laptop. I can set it up as a retro gaming unit. And I can tie into all my Arduino stuff. Like, this ought to be pretty fun. So that's going to be something we play around with. On top of that, I also have some other projects in mind. We're going to take this here computer. So I got this here computer from my father-in-law. It's an old Windows XP based computer. Uh, old AMD processor type stuff. First, we're going to use it. Uh, I want to do a video of basically showing what all is inside a computer. So before we go building a computer from scratch, I'd like to take an existing computer, take it apart and show you guys exactly what all is in a computer to begin with. Uh, you know, a lot of you guys out there already know this, but maybe some of you don't, so it, you know, might be worth it. And you go, oh, that's what that is. On top of that, I'm going to try making this computer capable of running Windows XP games like Dune 2000 or the old Dune, like the old, like, civ uh, was it Civilization 3? I want to run those games on this computer and be able to plug it into an HDMI port. A lot of your monitors and TVs these days only have HDMI, so if we can make this thing actually talk to HDMI, then we can play our old games, nostalgic games, on those TVs. So that should be interesting. So there's, there's lots of stuff that uh, we're working on for future reference. So yeah, make sure you're subscribed. Throw a thumbs up on the video, would greatly appreciate it, it helps out a lot. Make sure you're subscribed for the future stuff that we're going to be doing. Um, videos will come out, The you know, when it slows down uh, with all my other obligations slow down, then I can have more time to prepare and make these other videos, so they'll be coming. Uh, thank you very much everybody for watching thus far, and thank you for your attention and all, I appreciate it. You guys have a good night, I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.